Hello and welcome to Simplify Your Financial Math. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this short video, we'll look at the payment function. This function traditionally calculates the payment of a loan, but hang on till the end, because in the third exercise, I'm gonna show you how you can use this function to calculate how to become a millionaire or to achieve any other savings goal you may have. In other words, it's not just for loans, and you'll be surprised how easy it is. Let's get to our first exercise, exercise one. In this first warm up exercise, we're just gonna get our bearings. Let's say I wanna calculate the monthly payment of a loan. We type in the loan amount, we type in the annual interest rate, and we type in the term in years. Now we wanna calculate our monthly payment. So we go with equals PMT. Now you'll notice that there are three required arguments. There are also two optional arguments. We're gonna talk about those in the next exercise. As you can see, the arguments are rate, n per, which is number of periods, and PV, which is present value. Now before we enter these arguments, let's just observe something. There are really four values at play here. There's the monthly payment, there's the annual rate, there's the number of periods, and there's the present value, which is the loan amount. Three out of those four values have a time component. In other words, the payment period is monthly. The rate is annual and the number of periods in this case is years. The absolute most important thing to keep in mind when you're using the payment function is that those three have to have the same time period. In other words, you can use monthly, but all three of those need to be monthly. You could also do annual or quarterly, but again, all of them have to have the same time period annual or quarterly. If you mix and match the time periods, you're gonna get bogus and unexpected results. So if I'm calculating a monthly payment, the rate has to be expressed as a monthly rate. And the number of periods have to be expressed as months. So that is the key to working with the payment function. So we want a monthly payment, so that drives the other two time periods. They have to be monthly. So our rate here is an annual interest rate we can easily convert it into a monthly rate simply by dividing it by 12, comma, the number of periods. All right, this cell value is expressed in years. I need it to be months. So no problem, I can point it to this and simply multiply that by 12. And then a comma. And then the present value is 20,000, it's the loan amount. Now the other thing to realize about this financial function is it's using a cash flow basis. In other words, the 20,000 is a positive inflow to me. That means the monthly payment by default will be expressed as a negative outflow to me. Let's close the function and enter. Now it's easy to flip the sign if in our Excel we want this to be displayed as a positive number. One option is I could just throw a subtraction operator in front of the payment function, that would be fine. Another option is I could just wrap the absolute value function around the payment function. That would be fine too, and I'm sure there's many other ways to accomplish that. So, the main point of exercise one was to talk about two things. The time periods have to be the same, and these financial functions operate on a cash flow basis, positive inflow, negative outflow. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. In this exercise, we're gonna talk about the future value argument. Let's say I borrow 20,000, for five years, but at the end, I still owe 5,000. That might be called a balloon payment. And what these do is they basically lower the monthly payment. Another way we might be able to use this is if the future value is equal to the loan amount, that means we're basically doing an interest only loan. So if you have these type of scenarios, they're really easy just by using the future value argument. Equals PMT. We want the monthly payment. So that drives the time period for the other arguments. So the rate, here is entered as an annual interest rate. No problem, we just divide it by 12 to get it to a monthly rate. Comma, number of periods, that also has to be monthly, so it's gonna be this term, which is typed in as years, times 12. Comma, the present value is the loan amount, that's this. Comma, future value is this cell. Now while we're here, let's talk about the type argument, which is also optional. This just determines when I pay the payments. In other words, by default, it's assuming that I pay at the end of the period, in other words, interest accrues for that month, or I can select that I make the payment at the beginning of each period. So depending on what you're working on, check them out. Here, we'll just go with the default and enter. And once again, for this basic loan, we get 377.42. And let's go ahead and flip the sign with a subtraction operator and enter. 
Now let's enter the future value. Let's say that I have a $5,000 balloon payment. We expect this to lower our monthly payment. So right now the monthly payment is 377.42. Let's enter 5,000 and enter. And what? Now the monthly payment goes up to 450.95. What's going on? Here's the deal. We talked about this. This is operating on a cash flow, inflow, outflow kind of a basis. So all we need to do is flip the sign here and hit enter. And now this future value amount is working as expected. As we can see, it lowers the monthly payment, which is what we expect. So those first two exercises were about loans. Can we use this for savings? I don't know. Let's find out in the next exercise. By the way, as you know, Excel is a big place and I'd love to help you learn more about it. I'll help you automate your manual recurring Excel tasks. I'd love to have you check out my training programs. Use the link in the description to learn more. Exercise three. Here we're going to do like a reverse payment. In other words, instead of getting this money up front and having to pay it back, we're going to say we have a savings goal. How much should our monthly payment be to meet that goal? So our goal is to have $20,000. We earn an estimated rate of 4%. You can adjust this accordingly and for three years. So how much do we have to save each month? I don't know. Let's ask Excel equals PMT. Okay. We're asking for the monthly savings amount. So the rate also needs to be expressed as a monthly rate. This divided by 12 comma. The number of periods is this many years times 12, comma. The present value is what? Well, we're starting with zero, so it's zero, comma. The future value is what? It's this. Close function and enter. And we get 523.81. So the 20,000 is the goal. It would be a positive inflow. So the monthly savings amount is an outflow. 523.81, even though it's really going to our own account. So technically it's going to ourselves, but you get the idea. So what if we wanted to save a million dollars in 30 years? Let's go with 30 years. Let's say we can get an average of 10% return in some mutual funds or some index funds. And we want to have the goal of $1 million. And this is saying we can accomplish that with a monthly savings amount of 442.38. So this is how we can use the payment function. The first two exercises were about loans and the final exercise was about savings goals and how you can use it to calculate how to become a millionaire. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 